Hello, Robert Bastian here. Uh, this is a little teaching video about spasmodic dysphonia, attempting to help you work more effectively with your own physician. Once in a while, patients don't fully understand the difference between the Botox side effects on the one hand and the spasms of SD on the other. And so the doctor thinks that we're talking about Botox side effects, but the patient is talking about SD. Is my voice weak from spasms, meaning I need more Botox for a subsequent treatment? Or is my voice weak after the injection because of the Botox, meaning that I need a little less Botox? And just to mention, there are uh, there's a lot on Laryngopedia, my teaching website. Just type SD into the search window and up come a lot of posts. Now, here's the scenario. I had this happen to me just this past Saturday. I asked a patient, so how weak was your voice in the first week after Botox? The answer was, well, it was very weak. So I initially thought, okay, maybe the Botox dose was a little too high. But I mimicked, and I do that often. I said, you mean your voice was like this or it was like this? And I saw this look of uh, sort of not sure. So this led into my giving examples of Botox weakness versus SD weakness. And I discovered that we weren't communicating because the patient was having difficulty distinguishing which was which. And she's not alone. I've had that happen in the past with other people. Uh, we Some of us have better color perception than others. Others have better pitch perception. So, you know, we're all different. So I thought it might be worth just a little teaching session about the difference between Botox weakness and SD weakness. So here we go. The key is to understand the vocal phenomenology. Let me just give you some examples. Here's strain example number one. Long ago, people found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. It's fairly continuous, fairly continuous strain, not a lot of chop, uh, dropping of syllables, but that would be called a weak voice, I think, by many people but it's a weakness because of the strain and the squeezing of the, of the SD. It's not weakness from Botox. Strain number two is the voice is squeezing down. It's not going completely away. Long ago, people found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. So there are some syllables that are a little bit more normal, like Long ago, people found that it was easier to travel. So they're squeezing down. It's not stopping completely, but it's just squeezing down. Here's a phonatory arrest, a total one. Long ago, people found it was easier to travel on water and on end. So sometimes phonatory arrests are sort of total and clean cuts. And then other times it is a phonatory arrest, but it's it sort of is led into by a squeeze down. Long ago, people found that it was easier to travel on earth than on and So it's squeezing down and stopping. So those are some examples. All of those could be called a weak voice by a person who isn't clear on the difference between weakness of SD and the weakness of... So let's go on to Botox. The first example of the weakness of the side effect of Botox would be breathiness all by itself. It's fairly normal pitch of voice. So in me, it might sound kind of like this. You can hear that my voice is similar in pitch, but I'm having to take a breath a little more often and I'm blowing extra air. There's no strain, there are no stoppages. That's a weak voice. Second example would be breathiness plus a uh, what I call obligate falsetto, the person has no option. They, they they can try all day to stay down in the chest voice, but they get this kind of a voice. <clears throat> the voice is weak, but it's also mini mouse. I'm still having to take a breath more often because I'm running out of air. That's a, also weakness from Botox. Now, in both of those cases, I might suggest a little lower dose. In the first four, I might suggest a higher dose, even though all six of these are being called vocal weakness. And then there's one luffing and cracking where the voice is somewhat in the chest voice, 
but it's also cracking up into falsetto. That would be, that's not SD, that's Botox effect. So do you see that the reason why we need to know when you say weakness, what are you talking about? SD weakness or Botox weakness? I think most people, once they've had a number of injections, they become clear on this, but there are people where they just really struggle long-term to figure out what is it they're experiencing. Okay, I'm going to stop share, and I'm going to uh, now some practice samples. So which is this? Long ago, people found, this is a, a few days after Botox, long ago, people found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. What's your an answer? Well, that's a Botox weakness. Here's sample number two. Long ago, people found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Now, that's a week after Botox. What is the answer there? Right. That's SD. We didn't completely uh, do away with the SD. You need a higher dose next time. So those are strain and squeeze downs. What about this one? Long ago, people found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Well, Yep, you're right. That's a Botox effect. It's breathy, but it's also obligate falsetto. And then finally, what's this one? Long ago, people found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Well, that's, yep, you're right. That's strange. Now, some people, these differences are obvious, but others, it's actually a, a, a little difficult to figure out which it is you're, you're hearing. Well, if you just struggled to decide between those, you're not alone. What would I have you do? Listen to this little video several times. And if you're still struggling to hear the difference between the Botox weakness and the SD weakness, ask a family member to listen to this video as well and sort of compare notes because a husband or a wife might hear the difference better than you do. And then the other thought is to make a memo recording, you know, on your phone, there's a little utility and it's a voice memo and you can uh, make voice recordings, bring it in on your phone to the next visit and let the doctor hear what it was at one week, at two weeks and so forth. So what's the goal? The goal is to optimize your result. Don't miss out on a result that could be better because you're not clear on what it is you're trying to achieve because you're not clear on exactly what's happening to you after each injection. So uh, there's the idea. And of course, in our place, we also give patients the option to leave me a voice message. It leaves a little red light on my phone um, that I can listen to uh, at my leisure evenings and, and so forth. So there it is. Uh, make sure to get your best results that you're telling your doctor clearly what it is that's happening after each injection so that he or she can plan the next injection accordingly to be the same dose, uh, higher dose or a lower dose. Uh, thank you for listening.